What's up guys, Marcellus Williams, AKA The School Faster, here to educate you on health and social well-being. Today I'm gonna to be taking you guys through a full week's worth of training, pretty much getting you guys caught up with what I've been doing since I haven't really shown you guys my training since the Colorado trip two videos ago. So that was at this point, I want to say about two or three weeks ago. So I'm gonna get you guys caught up with what all I've been doing. And as usual, explain to you the why behind everything I'm doing and just what my mentality is towards certain things and aspects to my training. So that way, even if you guys are training in a different manner than me, you can take some of those mentalities and apply it to yourself. Now, before we get into this most recent week, let's kind of talk about where we left off. Now, when I last talked to you guys as far as my training, we were in, I won't believe, the second week of last block. So I want to take you through how last block actually finished off. As you guys know, we were doing top triples on squat and bench, and we were doing like, you know, still singles on my deadlift. And it was the first block where we were practice, uh, where we were incorporating having no back down work on my primary deadlift day, just focusing instead on pushing overall leg volume on my accessories, back volume on my back accessory work, as well as pushing the RDLs more. And you guys will see more of what that's been looking like with this most current block. But the way we finished off last block was we had a 463 PR squat triple, which I was very, very happy with this guy. Just simply due to the fact that this particular Saturday was after I was handling out of meat for a few hours. So I got up a lot earlier than usual on that Saturday and I trained a lot later than what I planned to that Saturday. Now, mind you, I've been trying to train a little bit later on Saturdays anyway, because I've noticed that on my weekday sessions, when I train closer to like, you know, anywhere between two and 3 p.m., I'm feeling really, really good. Whereas on Saturdays, even though it's my strongest day, training earlier around like 11 or noon just doesn't feel as good. So I've been trying to train closer to like 2 p.m., 3 p.m. on Saturdays anyway. But on this day, it was much, much later than that. It was after the meet, so I was training, I believe, between like 5.30 and 6 p.m. So I wasn't exactly feeling the best when I was building up to this, but it was one of those things where I just knew what I was capable of the day of. Like just regardless of how I was feeling, regardless of where fatigue was, I knew where my fitness was for that specific day. And it was just a matter of like, you know, paying attention to the trends of what I was hitting those previous weeks at the assigned RPEs and knowing what would be there even if I was feeling a little bit off. And it's just one of those things too where I had to kind of like, not ignore how I feel, but can look at not only how I'm feeling, but watch the actual footage of my warmth to see how things are moving and know that, okay, despite the fact that things don't feel as optimal as what I like, I know that this PR is still here. So you guys already know with me and the way that Brad has me go about my training, I'm pretty much always in the pocket. I'm always trying to stay true to RP and in some cases be even a little bit under that. But whenever PR is there, especially at the end of a block, we definitely push for it. And this moved very, very well. Like my position felt very consistent from rep to rep with this. So I was stoked about it. Uh, as far as deadlifts, I ended up working up to a single with 584 pounds and it moved okay. It definitely moved better than the first time I ever pulled 584 pounds a few blocks ago, but it didn't move quite as smooth as like my best pull of say 606 or even my second best pull, which is 595. It didn't move quite as smooth as either of those, which makes sense though, just simply due to the fact of like where overall volume and fatigue is right now relative to where it was back when I hit those previous PRs. So the fact that I was still able to come in and hit 584 pounds, especially with it still only being like a few weeks after um, I tweaked my back, felt really, really good. And it lets me know that despite the fact that we have cut out um, deadlift volume as far as actually pulling from the floor for back down work, that things were still in a fairly good place all in all. Now for the bench press the next day, once again, interesting circumstances because I came in, I was actually out of town in San Antonio and I came in and trained much, much later in the day than usual. But unlike with the squat, despite the fact that I trained much later in the day, I was feeling really, really good, which makes sense just because um, I had way more to eat at that point, which tends to just help me feel better on the bench press as a whole. So because I was feeling good, I decided to go for 345 pounds for my top triple, which would have been a PR triple. My best bench double is 352 pounds, and my best bench triple is 341 pounds. So 345 would have been a nice solid triple, and you guys can see the first two reps felt really, really good, really clean, really locked in. And maybe they felt too locked in. So the third rep, I would like in my mind when I would when I paused on the, my chest, the third rep was like, okay, I got this, and I kind of just pressed haphazardly. I didn't just really make sure I was staying in the groove of the bar path so much so to where I misgrooved a little bit halfway up. And even though I was right there at the lockout, because of where the bar was, was right under where the hook was, I couldn't just drive through that. So I just had the spotter take it. Otherwise, I would risk you know pushing into that hook and having the weight come back down on me. But still very very happy just with where the strength was as a whole as far as that. But pretty much that's how the last block ended as far as like the big takeaways. Now, 
as for what this block is looking like and what this most recent week of training has been like so what i'm about to show you guys is going to be like a few days from week one and then going all the way through week two of this block as tomorrow saturday will be uh, week three of this block and the final week of this block before we transition into the next phase and it's been going really really well so we're actually going to be starting like i said with uh week one of this block on actually day five my wednesday workout so as i explained to you guys we pretty much at this point are doing um you know, still the typical tertiary squat day setup on this day where I'm doing some type of comp squat or pause squat tempo, some type of variation that just, you know, lets me feel really good. Um, it's lighter loads, but it lets me just practice the movement for my primary day. So right now, um, we are doing just light percentage based squats on this day. And it's, it's feeling really, really good. My position's feeling very locked in, tra you know, driving these forward, keeping the stack position. Like I said, this day isn't to like cause a whole bunch of fatigue or even really getting that much additional volume. Granted, we've gone from doing like, you know, four to five sets to now um, five to six sets on this day. So the set volume is up, but the load is still very, very easy, very, very manageable. What is interesting is what we've done with the RDLs. Like I said, since we're no longer doing back down work on my conventional deadlift, everything else is getting pushed to kind of help make up for that, which is why the squat volume you guys are gonna see is higher as a whole. But the RDL volume is up as well. We're now doing five sets of four, which has been feeling really, really good on this most recent uh, Wednesday. I actually did 363 pounds, which I'll show you guys later. But uh, week one, I wanna say I was doing like 300 and, 41 pounds or something like that to start off. And it felt really, really good, no problems there. And then after that, we really pushed the leg volume on this day, on these Wednesdays. So we did uh, three sets of eight on belt squats. And <laughs> with the belt squat, um, on my heavier days, guys, I am now doing not just one band each side, but two Elite FTS bands each side, which is very, very difficult. I'm not gonna lie, it's crazy, like the, the drop in weight from like doing no bands to one band each side to two bands each side. As you guys can see, with two bands each side, I'm only doing two plates each side, so like 180 pounds, and it's easily the hardest the bell squat has ever felt. But I love it. Like the, the bands, guys, like because it's funny because whenever I post this on my Instagram, I get all these complex questions like, oh, are you doing this for peak tension at this point, or or why are you, you know, what's the biomechanical advantage of this and that? And it's like, it's very, very simple, guys. There's two reasons that I love using the bands. One, it just makes the belt squat feel more like my actual squat where I have to focus on keeping tension on the way down the same way I do on my normal squat I have to keep tension in position because with the belt squat with those bands I can't just drop into the hole I have to keep tension or it'll pull me down and then I have to just reverse up as hard as I can which is very applicable to my actual competition style squat and then beyond that it's the mere fact that it lets me reach higher exertions with less load I don't have to push the weight as heavy or put on as much weight on the machine because of how much resistance I'm getting just from the bands, how much harder the movement is. So it's very, very simple as far as that. Uh, after that, on my Wednesday sessions, guys, I am doing um, the vertical leg press machine that you guys have still seen me do in past videos, and that's still feeling really, really great. I do that for three sets of anywhere of 10 to 12 reps. And then we finish off that day with leg extensions and leg curls. So nothing really new there, guys, but you're just gonna notice that the overall volume of what I'm doing on my leg work has gone up once again. I'm trying to do everything I can to make up for having no back down sets on the deadlift and also trying to make sure that I'm doing everything I can to promote growth with my squat. So that's what uh, week one's Wednesday looks like. Now, for Thursday session, you guys will notice that we have switched out the um, the final bench day of the week, which is usually arson press, with close grip bench press. And the reason I want to do this is the mere fact that, okay, my competition grip is already fairly close. It's like pinky on slightly inside the ring, um, which is already pretty close. But since I've been running Larson press for so long, ever since switching my comp grip, grip back in, I just wanted to change up the stimulus a little bit, go with the closer grip, get just that much more hypertrophy. And also it allows me to just push a little bit more loads relative to what I can do with the Larson press, because even though my grip is closer than what it would be on the Larson press, since my Larson press is my comp grip, um, that leg drive just allows me to get a little bit more load out of that day. Now, after that, everything is very, very straightforward. I'm hitting some lat pull downs, um, seated cable rails. Once again, really emphasizing pushing uh, my back work as much as I can. Uh, you guys will see on these specific machines for the lat pull down and cable rail, I'm actually maxing out the stack. So luckily they have another lat pull down and cable rail machine at the gym that I go to that goes even heavier. So I'm gonna transition to that because once again, I am trying to really promote as much growth as I can with my back and leg accessory movements. So that's gonna be the game plan as far as that. And then after that on that day, I've got dumbbell bench press and then um, lateral raises, bicep curls, just the usual craftsmanship work on my Thursdays. And of course, Friday is a rest day. Then we came in last Saturday, this past Saturday, 
and my squats were feeling okay, but not quite as good as what they were week one. Week one, I believe I hit 430 pounds for my double and RP6. I came in this week and hit, I believe it was either 440 or 446 pounds for my double and RP7. It felt more like a seven, seven and a half, but I came in knowing that I wasn't feeling really great or as strong as what I wanted, which is why I set myself up to only hit 440, 446 instead of what I probably usually would do uh, for a double RP7, which would be 452. And my mindset with that is that, okay, scale back a little bit today. Don't push as hard. So that way I'll be able to push even harder um, this upcoming Saturday. So tomorrow for tomorrow's primary day, since that's going to be my final heavy double, I want to set myself up for the best number I can hit. And it just wouldn't make sense to create even more fatigue and exertion by pushing harder than what I needed to this past Saturday. Um, but aside from that, my back downs felt really, really good, very locked in. Once again, just my consistency of position from set to set and rep to rep is feeling great, even on days where I'm feeling more meh than what I would actually like. So I was really, really happy with that as far as the squats. Um, for the deadlift, I worked up to 550 pounds for my top single, and I was very, very happy with that, uh, simply due to the fact that I am still, like, you know, like I told you guys, I'm playing around with my setup now. And what I've come to, you know, Decide like what I'm doing with my set right now is I'm still bracing at the top, um, you know, drawing my ribs down, getting bracing into that, reaching my arms out long, hinging to the bar. But instead of that nice, slow, and controlled hinge you guys used to see me doing, I'm coming down a little bit faster, um, so making sure I'm keeping my back in that as neutralized position as possible, grabbing the bar one hand at a time, really getting that slack out, and then just wedging into the bar as hard as I can and really flattening out the back as I wedge into it, as far as my lower back. And so far it's feeling really, really good. It feels a lot faster off the floor as well, but I still feel like I can maintain that nice tension position off the floor. So it's been a nice balance, so we're gonna keep running with that. And then for bench press at this point, um, you know, it's technically my day one bench, it's just the lightest percentage-based bench work, and it's just an easy two by five. Brad has me doing touch and go right now, just kind of change up the stimulus, so no issues as far as that. Um, as a whole, I think the weirdest thing about it is just like, it just feels abnormal because I've not done touch and go in a very long time. I can actually say that right now, my touch and go bench is probably much weaker than my pause bench. That's how difficult it feels, right? Even though you get that momentum, it's just not what my body's used to doing. But uh, like I said, all in all, it felt really, really good. And then the next day, which was Sunday, I had bench my primary bench press day, worked up to a double with 336 pounds, which is good, because that's about 15 pounds over what I hit uh, week one, which was 320 pounds. So my hope is that this upcoming Sunday to make another jump that about that same amount of weight and hopefully finish off around like, you know, either matching my best double of 352 on the bench, or if there's a little bit more there, PR with 358 pounds, which would be fantastic, but we'll see how that goes. Um, as for my back down work on this day, right now, you guys know that we usually, after my primary bench, we do like weighted pull-ups, weighted dips. Right now, I'm running with body weight variations of these, just to kind of change it up once again, feel a little bit less beat up, especially because of how increased all the set volume is on everything, because that's one thing I forgot to mention. Um, with my back down sets, right, on both the squats, and the bench on my on my primary days now. Instead of five back down sets like we did from the last block, now it is six back down sets. So because the set volume's been increased on that as well as on my secondary days, I just am, you know, I'm still doing what I need to on my accessories, but once again, what I do with my accessories is very much based upon how I'm responding to my primary work on the big three. So for body weight pull-ups and dips, just going in there doing three sets of as many reps as possible. It's feeling really, really good. It's very funny to know that there was a time where I could bust out like a straight set of 50 pull-ups fresh. Mind you, I was much lighter, and that was years ago when I was like a calisthenics only boy. Um, but right now it's still feeling pretty good. I'm busting out about 20 to 25 reps on the first set, and then 15 to 20 on the second and third. With dips, I'm getting about like, you know, 30 to 40 reps on the first set, and then anywhere from like 20 to 25 reps on the second and third. Those are feeling really, really good. Then I've got a row of choice. Uh, once again, set volume is a lot higher on my rowing movements. Just promoting more back growth. And that's feeling really, really good. And then it's the usual stuff, the arms and the face pulls that you guys know we do on Sundays, which are you know, the day two um, of the week. So really, really happy with how those two days went and was especially happy with how day three, my Monday workout, my secondary squat day went, because you guys know with SSB squats that I've, I've been having a bad habit of really, really sandbagging it, but no more because we had a top set of five on SSBs. You guys know that last block we were doing top sets of sixes. So it was a top set of six, then three by six back downs. Now it's a top set of five and four by five back downs. And I worked up to 
300 and I want to say 76 or 377 pounds on the SSB squat, which mind you, I've never even hit that for one. So to come in and hit that for a top set of five felt really, really good. Uh, it felt about an RP seven half to eight, which is right on point with what I had assigned because I had a seven to eight RPE for that top set. And I was just really, really happy with it because once again, I'm trying to make sure I have that good balance on my secondary days of not sandbagging them too hard, but obviously not pushing them so hard to where the fatigue carries over too much into my church area and thus primary days. And I feel like I did a really good job with that. And for never having done that for one rep to do it for five, with that type of overall solid position just felt really really good made me feel very very confident in the strength that I am building um, in my quads especially with the SSB squad and just all this other leg accessory work that I'm doing in general and then my back down sets felt just as locked in I believe those were with 300 I was like 303 pounds maybe 314 I can't quite remember but you guys will see um, how much it was on screen but I was just very very happy with that as a whole and then after that we just had you know the typical uh, leg extension work that we have on Mondays, which is very similar to Wednesdays, it's a minus the leg press machine. So we had belt squats, but instead of uh, three by eight, we had a four by 12. Now with the four by 12 on this particular day, I didn't use bands, I didn't use um, one band each side or even two, just cause I just really didn't feel like setting it up. And I was actually curious to see, okay, how much just actual weight can I do? It's been a long time since I've just done like, you know, just weight on the belt squats without the bands. And it's incredible to see how much the banded belt squat has like just made normal belt squats feel super, super easy. I loaded five plates each side and that's 450 pounds and it moved super, super easy. And before I started using the bands, I don't think I would have been able to manage that for even like, you know, one set of 10, let alone an easy four by 12. So really, really happy with that. And then once again, leg extension and leg curls. My lower body accessory work guys is very, very simple, very, very straightforward. It's just, you know, getting an additional pressing volume on the quads. And then of course, working on leg extension, knee flexion, things like that, just to keep the knees healthy and get that little bit of additional volume in that I'm able to do. So really, really happy as far as just like, you know, just the way that those are going. Volume is up, but it's not so much to where my legs feel toast on the on the squat or the deadlift and, and that's the thing like uh, my work capacity guys as you guys know at this point is actually very very high even though i'm not built great necessarily for the big three where i can just cram a bunch of volume on that i can handle just overall workload period i just have to spread it out through my accessory work and make sure i'm spreading it out throughout the week of my six days of training but yeah monday's workout was really really good then for tuesday came in same thing uh, top set of five on bench and then four back down sets of five. I believe I hit, I want to say 297 pounds for this most recent day's top set of five. And then my back down sets of five were, I couldn't even tell, I remember off the top of my head. But once again, that'll be on screen. Um, and bench just feeling locked in, very consistent, like from session to session, week to week. You guys already know, like out of the big three, bench has always been like my lift, the easiest one. Um, despite having the longer arms, you know, your boys got jacks, got the big chest, and my overall scapular positioning and leg drive just gotten better and better over the years. So very, very happy with how bench is going. And then on this day, um, as far as overall accessory work, uh, we've got, I wanna say, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head what I do. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, we come in and we do a row of choice. I've been pushing a very specific row machine on this day. And once again, higher set volume, which you guys have been seeing me doing my back work. It's feeling really, really good. Emphasizing full protraction and retraction as per usual. Then after that, I have uh, incline barbell press, which has been fun. I have not been, you know, you guys know that whenever I get on incline barbell press, I mess with it for a little bit, then I stop. But for not having touched it in a very long time, where I'm at, my starting point, is very, very high. I believe it's like I did 185 pounds for my sets, and I don't believe my starting point's ever been that high on the incline bench press, which just shows that overall the pecs, shoulders, and triceps have been growing for me being able to come back to that movement and move it relatively easy as far as that. And then, um, after that, we've just got some rear delt work, some additional tricep work. Once again, usual craftsmanship work. So I'm just very, very happy that at this point, my accessories are, the best way I can put it is it's, it's, it's not mindless in the sense I'm going in and not putting in effort, but I'm just so strong on these movements and my base is so high on these movements where I can just come in, knock it out, and it just feels really, really good. And I'm just loving the consistency of what I'm doing with my accessory work. And then uh, after Tuesday, you know, we came in, on Wednesday and just, you know, progress slow from what we did the previous Wednesday. So uh, this time around I did, uh, I broke it down to six doubles for my squats, my tertiary squats. Felt very good, very locked in, had a slight tempo with it just to work on positioning. And then for my five by four on Romanian deadlifts, we did 363 pounds, which I'm pretty sure is the most I've done 
uh, on Romanian deadlifts for multiple sets. So very, very happy with that. And then Thursday came in and just beat what we did uh, on the close grip bench from last week by about 10 pounds. Then has some very easy back down work. So that's what my most recent training has been looking like, guys. That's what this block looks like. And pretty much, like I said, my goal is to come in tomorrow on Saturday. And if it's there, hit a PR double on squats. I want to try to at least match the 584 on deadlift. If not, I'll just take whatever ends up being there. And then on bench press, as I mentioned to you guys, the on Sunday, I want to try to hit anywhere between match my best PR double 352 to 358 pounds. Doing that's going to set me up really nicely to just finish out the rest of this week strong, finish out this block strong. And then from there, guys, we will officially be 12 weeks out from my next plan meet, which will be uh, the winter games, January 17th and Perlin, Texas, which is near the Houston area. And basically guys, just being real, my goal is to hit a 1500 pound total. Or like, you know, if it's like 1499, 1503, whatever it ends up being due to like, you know, the kilo conversion to, to, uh, to pounds, that's what I wanna do. I believe hitting that will put me at about 73 pounds over my best total that I hit back in February. And the reason that I've decided to do a meet in January when I told you guys I was gonna maybe try to do something at the end of the year is, it's just been very, very difficult to find a meet where I can really focus on myself due to everything that happened during 2020. Obviously, like, you know, um, things have not been open, but now that things are opening up more, I'm still having to focus more on like meets for my clients. Like it's October, I've got two meets to focus on for my clients this month. Uh, I'll be traveling uh, in November for two meets, in December for two meets. So January is when things are gonna calm down a little bit. I only have like one or two clients competing in January and it won't be around the time that I'm competing. Um, and then after that, things start picking back up in February. But y'all know, man, y'all know your boys, your boys are a coach first and foremost, but I still gotta get my own gains, man. I gotta get out here and do my thing as far as lifting. And the 1500 pound total will be really, really solid for me. That's a goal that I've just had since last year. And not to mention that it, it would, it's pretty realistic because to get that, all I have to pretty much do is barely beat my best squat of 501 with a 512 pound squat. Uh, like 507 to 512 pounds, I believe. Match my best deadlift that I hit in training of 606 and match my best bench that I just hit in the Colorado trip a couple of videos ago, 385 pounds. And I believe that would put me at, I wanna say like 1500, 1503 pounds. So obviously if there ends up being more on meet day, like I'm feeling good and obviously I'll have 12 weeks after this upcoming week, like so 12 weeks from next Saturday to build. So obviously if there's, if there's more on the top end, I will take it, but that's what I want at the bare minimum in order to secure that 1500 pound total. And if I do that, man, I'll be happy from there. I'm just gonna get right back into building and you know, we still don't know what's going on as far as nationals or anything next year, but if that ends up going down, sweet. Like I said, at this point, I'm in a spot where where I don't really know if I'm gonna be able to compete in nationals or not, just due to the amount of clients that I have that will be doing it. It'd be kind of a pain to go and compete and also like handle. So we'll see as far as that, but that's pretty much what my goals are. Everything that I'm doing and everything that I've been doing since my February meet has been just building towards this goal of like, okay, I wanna hit a 1500 pound total because I know I am capable of that, which is just really, really cool for me personally, just because Relatively speaking, I remember just a couple years ago, not even thinking that would necessarily be like a goal of mine, that I would be like pushing towards that. So, you know, even though it ain't nothing to lead by any means, you know, it's a little bit above average for the powerlifting world. So I'm very, very excited to just go in and, you know, do the best I can to build towards that. And I, I definitely think that I'm more than capable of doing it. My base is easily the highest it's been. And now it's just, you know, getting refined with the singles, getting reacclimated and building upon that for the next 12 weeks once I get through this final week of the block. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys. That's what my game plan is. That's what my goals are. That's what my training has been looking like. And that is it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you did. If you not, leave a comment down below. Let me know what can be better. Like the video, share, subscribe. Keep it simple, specific, scientific. I'll catch you guys later.